that's more like it. Stone lifting the Stanley Cup. Yeah! Let's go. Go, let's go. Why? Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, he's gorgeous. I never thought I'd see that in a hockey game. The Golden Knights win 3-1 to one against the Minnesota Wild in game two of this first round series. I know, I know. Three whole goals. We scored three goals in this game. That may sound like a lot, but honestly, I was shocked every single time one of them went in. And it was <laughs> just... <laughs> it only took us six freaking periods. I mean, overtime counts because, like I said, six periods. So the first period happens and no scoring from either team, even though it probably should have been three nothing Minnesota by the end of the first. Honestly, it could have been two nothing after the first 10 minutes. I don't really know. For the first period, I tuned into the NBC app to watch the game and there were no commentators. Do we like not have broadcasters right now? Make flurry for flurry because please get this win. Tuck, don't you dare take that penalty. Tuck's gotta be thinking, this team drafted me and thought I was expendable, so they sent me to Vegas. Mark Andre freaking flurry. Oh my goodness, this man is so good. I, I, uh, yeah, good saves. Oh my goodness, that was like three shots in a row. My wife loves me a lot and I've loved Flurry since the at least 2009 that I can remember actively cheering for Marc-Andre Flurry. And he, I can't believe my wife let me name our child after him, well, his second middle name. But I mean, after the performances, the first two games that he's played in this playoff series alone, I feel like she, even she would consider it out of the right of her mind. Right? No? Oh. <laughs> Flurry's been on top of it so far. Like seriously, if you watch all the highlights from this, like the extended one, the nine minute video, most of them are Flurry just absolutely robbing all the wild people. And like last game, it was Ryan Hartman that was going to be seeing Flurry in his nightmares. This game, it was Fiala. Oh no, good job Flurry. Completely just mm, grand larceny against the wild in the first period. Good job. <laughs> Eric Sinek taking a real long time to get out of that crease. Our one good opportunity involved Carey driving to the net with getting the puck from around the net and uh, just a huge cluster of bodies in front, but Talbot ended up saving this and it didn't go in. Pulls off. Carey! Shot from outside, because that's all you guys want to do. Carey! Blocked. Stone! No! Come on! You need to catch that, dude! But so far, we've gotten through the first uh, half of the game and the, hey, that's like four whole regulation periods with no goals from either team, but one of them is because they're playing good defensively and the other one is because of freaking Marc-Andre Fleury. But our best chances have come from William Carrier. Like, I love Carrier. My grandma has his jersey and he's an awesome play person too, uh, but there's a problem when your best offensive opportunities in the last, oh, I don't know, to game and a half have come from William Carrier. I'm gonna do curls at 10 pounds until we score starting at puck drop during live play because something needs to change. Might as well be my health. All right, let's go. Come on, guys. Our first goal in regulation comes 12 minutes into the second period where the Wild have the puck in their offensive zone. Battling for the puck, Greenway ends up winning the puck, sends it over to Dumba on the point on the far side who fires this from the point, just completely blasts it. And even though I don't like the guy, it was a really good shot. And Flurry was completely screened in front, did not see it, and it goes past him to make it one nothing Minnesota. Haig and Felino battling in front of Flurry, just uh, there, nothing you can do when you can't see the puck. And Vegas Twitter is like, oh, well, game over, right? Because we can't score, so like, uh, obviously that's that's it, that's, that's the game. But who says nay? Jonathan Marcheseau says nay. 18 seconds later, the puck gets over to Smith in the neutral zone and he skates in with it and drop passes it for Marcheseau. Marcheseau grabs the puck in the center and starts to skate over to the right and rifles this absolutely snipes this over a Cam Talbot shoulder to tie the game 1-1. Yeah! Finally! Ha ha ha! Woo! 
Vegas' first goal of the series, and uh, it was a huge one. 18 seconds after Dumba's goal, and uh, just uh, the, mm, the importance of the timing of this goal cannot be understated. The fact that we answered like that is so incredible, which is why Marcia So is my third star of the game, because this goal was monumental in changing the momentum of this game. Yes! There's a number that's not zero next to our name! I called it. Before the game, I had called that there were gonna be four players that scored tonight, but the first person I put was Jonathan Marcheseau, and the second person I put was Alex Tuck. And about five minutes later, Petrangelo skates in with the puck into the offensive zone. He tries to take a shot on net. Talbot saves it easily because it's from the outside, like all of the other shots have been. Yanmark tries to clean it up behind the net and sends it right back into the slot, and the only person there is Alex Tuck, and he bangs this past Talbot to make it 2-1 Vegas for our first lead of the series. Good. Yeah! Tuck! Yeah! <laughs> Let's go! Our first lead of the series! Yeah! Let's go! Oh my gosh! <laughs> Woo! Actually hearing someone shout Let's Go Wild in this feed when you can't hear any of the other crowd sounds and you, you know what's in there. That is honestly infuriating. Smith shot right in the top of its freaking chest. Oh, oh, we have the lead after a period. We have the lead after, we have the lead at all. <laughs> so we go into the third period, up one goal, and it's just nice to have the lead. Would it really be a flurry spectacular game if their post wasn't involved at least once? Kevin Fiala and Victor Rask two on one against White Cloud and Fiala with the feed over to Rask who sends it. And I can't tell if Flurry got a piece of this or not, but either way it hit the crossbar and went out and oh boy. Uh oh, two on one, Fiala, Rask. Oh, that hit iron. Like even though we had just, we'd finally scored and we had the lead, I did not feel comfortable at all and this only made it worse. Remember how I said that it was Fiala's turn to be having Flurry in his nightmares? Well, that happened several times in the third period where he was robbed by Flurry's glove, Flurry's pads, Flurry's bot, Flurry. Good job, Flurry. Man, I feel like I'm about to cry because we got flurry. <sighs> the first time that I actually felt comfortable happened with about a minute and a half left in regulation because Minnesota got called for tripping Jonathan Marsh's There's a penalty here. And it is on Minnesota. Yeah! Yeah! Honestly, uh, 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 there were a couple of calls that I thought should have been made. There was one for interference. You can't do that! No whistle? Wow. Petro, Petro! What a move! Let's go! You're kidding me. <gasps> Is that not a penalty? That's gotta be a penalty, right? Right? I don't know. He grabbed him over the neck! because he cross-checked Kaprizov. Petro got the cross-checking penalty, and then Dumba, and then Dumba retaliating kept the game at even strength. Guys, it's not their power plates. Four on four. Why are they dominating this much? Once they called that penalty with about a minute and a half left, that was in my head, okay, it wasn't exactly game over. Like I still felt a little bit nervous, but a huge weight lifted from my shoulders and I was like, okay, we've got this. I, I, I wasn't even expecting us to score because A, it's a power play, but B, there's a minute and a half left. All we have to do is run down the clock. Uh, but <laughs> somebody had some other things in mind, namely Alex Tuck. Yeah! <laughs> Alex freaking Tuck! Let's go! Let's go! Less than a minute left to play, Alex Tuck skates around the net with the puck and sends it over to Stevenson, who just flies into the offensive zone, goes right past that red line and goes immediately behind the net and just sends it back into the slot for who else but Alex Tuck, who's in front to bang this past Talbot, making it 3-1 Vegas. <laughs> we scored a power play goal. Eh. 
<laughs> we scored a goal. We, we scored a power play goal. And like the announcer said, with three seconds left, and Marc Andre Fleury was brilliant and had one more opportunity to try for brilliance where at the end with an empty net for Minnesota, Fleury grabs the puck and tries to shoot it for the first Marc-Andre Fleury empty net goal attempt that I've seen in person, but well not in person, but you know what I meant. I'd do the man up, that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> Did not have nearly enough time. It got blocked down in the D zone anyway, but uh, that's the game. <laughs> we won! We won! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> what do I want to talk about? What do I want to talk about? Um, Cam Talbot had the lighter workload in this game. However, there were actually, for the first time this series, some spectacular saves that he made, namely one in the third period that kept it at a one goal game. But uh, he was, he, like, uh, he's, he's a really, really good goalie. And then there's Marc-Andre Fleury. <laughs> it's almost unfair to Cam Talbot in the series because you take the great saves that he makes and you put them on the scales next to Marc-Andre Fleury's, <laughs> who is going absolutely savage on all of Minnesota's forward shots. And uh, for the most part, Kaprizov and Stone have been held to very, very minimal anything at all, really. Um, Kaprizov had a penalty. Uh, Kaprizov got called for the penalty that happened when there was about a minute and a half left, and that was the first time he really, like, impacted the game. Like, okay, so he's had flashes of brilliance, and he had one really good shot, but Flurry robbed him uh, in game one. But other than that, he's been paired up mostly against McNabb and Theodore, and they've been able to shut him down pretty, pretty well, especially because there is a communal effort where everyone on the ice is aware of him specifically because he is a game changer, and he's the real deal. Uh, as for Mark Stone, that's been kind of a group effort from Minnesota where they've put all the six of their defensemen against him and then really kept him at bay. Uh, and I, I think it's the same thing where they're very aware of Stone and the difference maker that he is. However, without patches on that line, it does seem that he's not really as effective, which is not what you want your superstar top paid person on your lineup to be is dependent. But... <sighs> Things are about to get a lot tougher. We head to Minnesota for games three and four, and we've only won one game in regulation in Minnesota. That's it. Actually, I don't think we've ever won in regulation there. This season, they're 3-0-1 against us, and that one being an overtime win that happened right at the end of the season, so we have won there recently, but 2-6 all-time in Minnesota, one in the overtime, which is our last game there, and then one in the shootout from, uh, I think it was year one, one. Yeah, I'm 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 nervous, but uh it's gonna it's, it's, it'll be fine. It'll be, it'll it'll be fine. Our next game Thursday against Minnesota in Minnesota's barn and hopefully we can take one of these next two if not both of them. But that's going to be it for round 1 game 2's nightly review. Thank you so much for watching and have a good night. I ended up <laughs> doing girls for a long time. Maybe I should implore that the rest of the series until we score the first goal of the game. Uh, <laughs> that shouldn't make me nervous. That shouldn't make me nervous. Like guys, just con con continue scoring, please.